My name is Jack Wang. I'm a microbiology professor, and in 2020, I was named the Australian University Teacher of the Year. Did I find out if any of that matters anymore and whether or not I'm completely replaceable by AI? All my colleagues in academia are focusing on the death of the essay and how students can use the platform to cheat or generate pre-written work. Am I the only one thinking selfishly here about the inevitable logical conclusion to all of this? Not how AI will be abused by students trying to find loopholes in the system, but that AI will be co-opted by large institutions and then become the system. What I'm trying to say is, are my days numbered? Is my job as a scientist, microbiologist, and college professor going to be replaced by AI sooner rather than later? Instead of philosophizing about it, I'm gonna put it to the test and use ChatGPT, the current most popular iteration of AI as of December 2022. And I will simply ask it the questions I would ask myself or what any teacher preparing for a new class ahead of a new semester need to ask of themselves. Let's see what it comes up with and open with the biggest question of all. Can AI replace a microbiology teacher? Here's what it says. It's unlikely that AI will be able to replace a microbiology teacher in the near future. Okay, that's good news to start. While AI technology has advanced significantly in recent years, it's still not capable of of replicating the complex process of teaching and guiding students in the way that a human teacher can. Again, that sounds like great news, but maybe it's just trying to butter me up and fool me into thinking it's not quite as advanced as it actually is. Additionally, teaching is a highly personalized and interactive process that involves creating a learning environment that is conducive to student growth, something that AI is not currently capable of doing. Currently capable of doing sounds quite optimistic. This could be AI's attempt to trick us into thinking that they are of no threat to any of our livelihoods. So I'm an award-winning teacher. I happen to know a little about creating a positive learning environment. So let's break it down piece by piece and see what AI would suggest. The first piece of a good learning environment is to establish exactly what your role as a teacher is in the classroom. So how can I convince my students that I know what I'm doing as the teacher. Be well prepared for every lesson and be able to answer their questions confidently and accurately. You can also show your expertise in the subject matter by sharing relevant personal experiences and knowledge and by staying up to date on the latest development in the field. Okay, so all of this is very sensible advice. Preparation and personalization. Teachers are the textbook come to life a humanoid interactive guide, if you will. I'm still feeling pretty good right now about not being replaceable because that expert knowledge I've accrued working for 15 years in science isn't something that's readily searchable, right? Okay, let's try next. What topic should I teach in my first lecture in a microbiology class? Here's where it starts to go off the rails. A brief overview of the field and the types of organisms studied such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protists, microbial cell structure, cell walls, cell membranes, and organelles microbial metabolism and growth, discussion of different types of metabolism that microbes use to obtain energy and nutrients, respiration, fermentation, photosynthesis, microbial diversity and classification, vast diversity of microbial species. This is pretty much topic by topic, exactly what I teach in my first lecture and really in the entire semester long course. My expert knowledge of the field was matched in about 10 seconds by AI in terms of what to teach. I've also been involved in curriculum and program mapping exercises that lasted over 12 months and it seems like a huge waste of time in retrospect. Oh, but wait, a loophole. What I teach and indeed the outcomes of those curriculum mapping exercises, as well as textbook outlines and research articles that we help to write, all are fair game for the AI's algorithm, right? So the work me and my colleagues have done, it's part of the pool of data AI is drawing from. So I've helped train the data set that will ultimately replace me, but hopefully I'll always be able to stay one step ahead. Scientists and teachers have to create the knowledge before any algorithm can curate it as its own. Not great, but I'll barely count that as safe. Let's try and make it more challenging. Everyone says teaching is this ineffable art, blending cognition and creativity, something that no robot can reproduce. So let's try and tell a good joke to my students. What's a good joke for me to tell to break the ice to my students in my very first class as a microbiology professor? So this is the joke, I'm gonna deliver it, and you can be the judge. Why was the microbiologist cold? Because he left his lab coat in the fridge. I think we found the glitch in the matrix here. And like any good joke, it comes with instructions about why it's funny. The joke is funny because microbiologists keep their samples in a fridge to keep them cool and prevent them from growing or spoiling. By saying that the microbiologist left his lab coat in the fridge, it makes it sound like he was so focused on his work 
that he forgot to take his coat with him when he left the lab. This is my favorite bit. This light hearted joke can help to make your classmates laugh and feel more comfortable in your first lecture together. If there was ever a sentence written by a robot, that's the one. If you saw my last video, it was all about the pressures for teachers to be entertaining and why being funny is one of the many tools in an engaging speaker's toolkit. So this doesn't quite remove AI from contention of being a good autonomous robotic teacher. What else is there? Let's say interesting stories or anecdotes about the field to capture the audience's imagination. So AI, what's an interesting anecdote about microbiology for an introductory class? The story of Louis Pasteur and his work on the process of pasteurization. Pasteur was a French scientist who is considered one of the founders of modern microbiology. He's best known for his development of the process of pasteurization, which is a method of heating liquids such as milk to a high enough temperature to kill off harmful bacteria without altering the taste or nutritional value of the liquid. It's like it read my mind. Exactly what I use as an anecdote in my first lecture. Louis Pasteur is an amazing scientist ahead of his time by a hundred years at least. If we were to recreate his experiments today with all the advantages of modern technology, we really can't improve upon the airtight logic and experimental controls in his scientific methodology. All right, that's another point for AI, unfortunately. What else about my job has creative elements to it? Assessment. Surely it takes an expert to know an expert and assessment is how we judge the value of that knowledge or expertise. So what authentic assessment tasks should I use in my introductory microbiology class? Conducting a lab experiment, students working in groups to design and carry out a microbiology experiment, such as testing the effect of different antibiotics on bacterial growth, or writing a research paper on a specific topic in microbiology to present their findings, developing a presentation on a specific aspect of microbiology, such as the role of microorganisms in the environment or the importance of antibiotics in medicine. I can't deny these are some great ideas. I've used most of these, but not all of these, and I'd really consider some of these ideas for next semester in my own class. It also gives some last minute advice. The key to setting effective authentic assessment is to choose tasks that are engaging, challenging, and help students develop deep understanding, critical thinking, and problem solving skills. That's my teaching mantra in a nutshell. I'm clicking losing faith in my inability to be replaced. Seems to know me a little too well. All right, my last hail merit. Let's talk about high order thinking and problem solving in science. How do I design an experiment to test if a novel protein is involved in a biological process? First, identify the process you wanna study and develop a clear hypothesis. Choose an appropriate model system, cell line, animal model, develop a method to manipulate the expression of the novel protein. This could be genetic engineering techniques or using a drug to inhibit its activity. Everything is spot on. This is exactly the approach to take. Everything short of actually going physically into the lab and doing the experiments. I give up. It's figured everything out. So what's my conclusion? Can AI replace me as a scientist, professor, and teacher? Well, in the interest of self-preservation, these questions only represent a sliver of all the things I need to do as part of my job, right? But really, other than coming up with good, believable humanoid jokes, in the realm of teaching, and especially planning for teaching, AI can do everything I can do. Sure, it's not going into the classroom to interact with students, but for a while there, no one was, right? There's already enough video footage of me online to splice some deep fakes together and I can just be the avatar AI-driven regurgitation of key facts and figures about microbiology, which actually don't change that frequently. So maybe in that aspect of my job, I'm more replaceable than I thought. Good thing is I don't have to guess because this exasperation happened very recently. During the first shutdown in early 2020, most, if not all colleges and universities reused previous year's videos in place of classroom attendance. Professors and teachers managed online discussion boards, answering questions just like the AI platform has done for me today via that chat dialogue. How did students like it? They absolutely hated it, almost started a revolution. The human element was missing and motivation plummeted as did many of their grades. As long as people still want connections to other people as part of their study, and work. Jobs like mine that focus on communicating to others still hold their value. They will change and evolve over time. And I would say this exercise with AI has real potential to improve my teaching practice. I need to figure out how to be more compelling than the latest cutting edge AI content and develop new high order skills that are more creative, less repetitive, and less likely to be automated away in the near future. All essential elements of employability that we need to convey to our students. But at its core, we still value that connection to others, at least for the time being. One last question for AI. How do I make a viral video about teaching and artificial intelligence? 
What should I wear to teach my first university class? It's important to dress professionally, wearing clothing that is neat, clean, and formal, a suit, dress pants, or a skirt and dress shirt or blouse, dress shoes. I know a lot of professors that already failed on that first condition alone. Can you write a poem about Louis Pasteur? Louis Pasteur, a man of great fame, his discoveries brought honor and name. In the field of science, he shone so bright, his contributions a lasting delight.